Good morning. My name is Mitchell. I'm the director of the Office of Electric, Gas, and Water at the New York State Department of Public Service. I have been designated to serve as the alternate representing the chair of the New York State Board on Electric Generation Siting and the Environment, or as it is also known, the Siting Board. I call this meeting of the Siting Board to order. Before moving to the agenda, I would like to introduce the alternates representing the permanent members of the Siting Board. Louis Alexander, alternate representing the Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Conservation. Dr. Elizabeth Lewis Michael, alternate representing the Commissioner of the Department of Health. Ian Wells, alternate representing the Commissioner of the New York State Department of Economic Development. And John Williams, alternate representing the Chair of the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Secretary Phillips, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes, but I did want to ask for one clarification regarding the document in front of you. Um, currently, ordering clause two indicates that the proceeding would be continued. I want to um, ask whether that should instead say that it's denied and the proceeding is terminated and closed, as this change would be consistent with the previous order that was issued in this case. Uh, Chair Mitchell and Secretary Phillips, um, that is uh, certainly the more appropriate relief to be requested. Um, Public Service Law Section 170 does provide additional process for the um, aggrieved party to pursue, um, which may be why it was um, included rather than a termination before the agency. But I think, you know, conferring with uh, General Counsel Rosenthal, we believe that that is the more appropriate form of relief to be included in the order, and we will revise it accordingly. Thank you, Judge Leary. Okay, thank you. With that clarification, um, I hope it's all understood by all of the members that that is what you're voting on. Thank you. Thank you. We will begin with case 17-F-0598, application of Northside Energy Center, LLC, for a certificate of environmental compatibility and public need pursuant to Article 10 of the Public Service Law for construction and operation of a solar electric generating facility located in the towns of Brasher, Messina, and Norfolk, St. Lawrence County, presented by Maureen Leary, Administrative Law Judge, Department of Public Service, Richard Sherman, Administrative Law Judge, Department of Environmental Conservation, Dakin Leakakes, Chief Administrative Law Judge, Department of Public Service, Jason Zare, Chief of Environmental Certification and Compliance, Office of Electric, Gas, and Water, Department of Public Service, and Robert Rosenthal, General Counsel, are available for questions. Judge Leary, please begin. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Mitchell and members of the Siting Board. Before you today is a proposed order on rehearing that addresses Northside Energy Center's petition for rehearing of the Siting Board's August 9, 2022 order that denied a certificate of environmental compatibility and public need for a major solar facility. The proposed order before you finds that Northside's rehearing petition does not meet the criteria in Public Service Law Section 170 and the implementing regulations in 16 NYCRR section 3.7. Thus, the rehearing petition does not qualify for the Siting Board to grant rehearing. Nevertheless, the proposed order otherwise addresses and denies Northside's assertions of errors of law and fact and its request for reversal of the Siting Board's denial order. The proposed order also denies Northside's alternative request to reopen the record based on new circumstances. Essentially, Northside's rehearing petition reiterates the position it advanced before the Siting Board previously. It challenges the Siting Board's denial order, which found that Northside failed to demonstrate on the record first that the project minimizes and, avoided and avoids adverse environmental impacts to the maximum extent practicable, including impacts to freshwater wetlands and threatened and endangered species. These minimization and avoidance requirements are set forth in Public Service Law 
section 1683C. Second, Northside failed to demonstrate that the project as designed complies with applicable substantive requirements of state environmental laws and regulations, including Environmental Conservation Law, Article 24, which governs the protection of freshwater wetlands, and Environmental Conservation Law, Article 11, which governs the protection of threatened and endangered species and their habitat. Again, this is a required showing by Public Service Law 1683E. And finally, Northside, the denial order finds that Northside failed to demonstrate that the project is in the public interest as required by Public Service Law Section 1683B. As the denial order and the proposed order before you indicate, these are mandatory findings under Article 10 that the Siting Board must make before a certificate may issue. The Siting Board's denial order was based upon an extensive and complex evidentiary record. And this record was reflects Northside's opportunity for a full and fair hearing to meet Article 10's standards. The proposed order before you is based on the record as well, relying on the analysis and rationale contained in the denial order. A detailed description of the project and its environmental impacts are set forth in the denial order, and I will not repeat them in full here. But in summary, the following facts are not in dispute and are recited in the proposed order before you. Northside's application sought approval to construct and operate a 180 megawatt commercial scale solar electric generating facility located in the towns of Brasher, Messina, and Norfolk in St. Lawrence County, New York. The project area consists of approximately 2,240 acres, of which approximately 1,504 acres, or 67% of the entire project area, included freshwater wetlands, approximately 37 in total. These wetlands were also considered part of wetland complexes. Some of these wetlands appear on the state's officially promulgated freshwater wetlands maps pursuant to Environmental Conservation Law, Article 24. Numerous protected streams are also in the project area, as well as seven threatened and endangered species and two species of special concern. These include the endangered short ear owl, the endangered golden eagle, the threatened Blanding's turtle, northern harrier, sedge wrens, upland sandpipers, and bald eagles. And finally, the vesper sparrow and the grasshopper sparrow are in the project area. Those are species of special concern. Some of these protected species were identified in Northside's application, as well as by the Department of Environmental Conservation experts and recognized by the Department of Public Service staff. These species exhibited essential behavior in the project area, that is, they were living, nesting, feeding, roosting, foraging, and reproducing. Under DEC's wetland regulations, this behavior means that the project area should be characterized as, quote, occupied habitat for the protected species and given a wetlands classification affording the highest protection, specifically class one. I mention this because this is, in fact, one of the challenges that Northside advances, which will, I, I will address later in my presentation. The main dispute in this proceeding and in Northside's rehearing petition involves its legal interpretation of Article 24 of the Environmental Conservation Law. That is, that unmapped but delineated wetlands that do not appear on the state's official freshwater wetlands maps are not entitled to protection under ECL Article 24 and by extension to the Siting Board's protection under Article 10. The record confirms that although some wetlands in the project area are not mapped, 
They were, in fact, identified and delineated by Northside's own expert consultants. They were verified by the Department of Environmental Conservation, along with DPS staff, and many are contiguous or adjacent to mapped wetlands and therefore part of the same wetlands complex. Based on the Siting Board's prior denial order, the proposed order before you on rehearing again rejects North, Northside's attempt to limit the protection afforded to unmapped wetlands. And it finds, based on the record, that all of the project's environmental impacts have not been minimized or avoided to the maximum extent practicable. As a result, the proposed order affirms that the Siting Board cannot make the required findings under Public Service Law Section 1683C in order to issue a certificate. In addition, the proposed order reiterates the denial order's finding that the record is deficient regarding impacts to threatened and endangered species and their habitat resulting in the same finding or absence of finding. Northside's rehearing petition asserts that the Siting Board committed several errors of law and fact and therefore warrants reversal. With respect to wetlands, the rehearing petition asserts that unmapped wetlands again are not subject to protection. Northside also asserts as a factual matter that it sufficiently addressed the project's wetland impacts but that due to a, quote, multitude of siting constraints, end quote, the project's layout could not be reconfigured to fully minimize or avoid impacts and yet still generate 180 megawatts of electricity. The rehearing petition further asserts that the Article 24 wetland regulations do not apply, but alternatively that the siting board did not apply the so-called weighing standards in those regulations. Citing the denial order, the proposed order on rehearing notes that the Siting Board relies on its own separate and broader authority under Article 10 to find that unmapped wetland impacts had not been sufficiently minimized or avoided. The proposed order also notes that the Siting Board's authority in this regard is not constrained by Environmental Conservation Law Article 24. Relying on the denial order, the proposed order recites record evidence of Northside's failure to properly address wetland impacts. The proposed order rejects Northside's narrow reading of Article 24 and further finds that, that legislative amendments passed in April 2022, which was before the Siting Board's final denial order, uh, and amended Article 24 to eliminate certain references to the mapping system, the Siting Board in the proposed order finds that, that those legal amendments do not define or limit DEC's prior authority with respect to unmapped wetlands. Moreover, the proposed order finds that those legislative amendments do not define or limit the Siting Board's Article 10 authority. The rehearing petition also challenges the Siting Board's failure to apply the so-called weighing standards, as I referenced before, and the proposed order confirms that the issue of the weighing standards need not be reached in light of Northside's failure to meet its Article 10 burden to demonstrate in the first instance minimization and avoidance of wetland impacts to the maximum extent practicable. The rehearing petition also challenges the Siting Board's treatment of this project when compared with other Article 10 projects. Like the denial order, the proposed order notes the difference in the extent of the wetlands impacted by this project, which are estimated to be as much as 757 acres. The denial order found the project's impacts, quote, unprecedented when compared with the number of acres of impacted wetlands in cases cited by Northside, including the Trelina, Excelsior, and East Point cases. Just by way of comparison to the 757 acres potentially impacted here, the Excelsior project had impacts on a total of 0.31 acres 
of adjacent areas, that is within 100 feet. The Trelina case identified impacts again to only adjacent areas of 4.8 acres and in East Point the wetland impacts also limited to adjacent areas total 0.34 acres. Thus the proposed order confirms that both qualitatively and quantitatively the extent of wetland impacts in this proceeding are far different than the impacts evident in those cases. Northside's rehearing petition next asserts that, quote, because of the multitude of siting constraints, in light of the multitude of siting constraints, the siting board erroneously assigned Northside a, an impracticable burden of proof. And the siting board failed to identify the minimization and avoidance measures that would be necessary for the project. Like it did previously, Northside also asserts that DPS staff and DEC staff did not propose an alternate layout for minimization and avoidance purposes. The proposed order before you rejects this argument, as well as Northside's attempt to shift the burden to either the siting board or the agencies. It cites the Article 10 regulations that place the burden of proof squarely on Northside. The proposed order also recites that Northside alone chose the proposed location for the project amid 1,504 acres of wetlands. Citing the denial order, the proposed order notes Northside's failure to include with its application a wetlands mitigation plan which could have provided evidence of more specific minimization, avoidance, and compensatory mitigation measures that would have addressed wetland impacts. The proposed order affirms the denial order's rejection of Northside's assertion that the project will actually restore the functions and benefits of certain wetlands in the project area that had been previously disturbed by agricultural and other activities. The proposed order finds that Northside failed to support this assertion on the record and that its own wetlands delineation report and wetlands functions and benefits assessment do not support the assertion. Turning to the proposed order's treatment of the rehearing petition's challenges with respect to threatened and endangered species, Northside asserts that the protected species sh were protected under a proposed certificate condition, I believe it was certificate condition 99, that required the submission of a net conservation benefit plan. Northside asserts that this was sufficient minimization and avoid avoidance of impacts to the protected species. Northside claims that the project therefore complies with DEC's Threatened and Endangered Species Regulations set forth in 6 NYCRR Part 182. The proposed order before you recites record evidence that the project's wetlands were occupied habitat for threatened and endangered species and refers to Northside's proposed reliance on, quote, best management practices and ad hoc measures in the field by construction personnel rather than relying on a detailed and methodical plan to protect the species in the project area during construction and operation. The proposed order before you rejects Northside's challenge in this regard and affirms the denial order's finding that the record lacks sufficient evidence to support a finding that impacts to protected species and their habitat had been minimized and avoided to the maximum extent practicable. This is particularly true given Northside's position on the protection or lack of protection afforded to unmapped wetlands. Thus, the proposed order finds that nothing in the rehearing petition reflects an error of law or fact with respect to threatened and endangered species that would justify the siting board revisiting its findings in the denial order. Turning to Northside's alternative request to reopen the record based on new information, the rehearing petition requests that the siting board reopen the record 
and consider potential additional minimization avoidance and compensatory mitigation measures. The rehearing petition generally refers to the possible use of nine additional parcels and a DEC reforestation area as potential opportunities to implement such measures. This is too little, too late. The proposed order before you first recites the multiple opportunities Northside was afforded during the proceeding to present such information, including in its application and the multiple application supplements and updates filed with the secretary. In addition, the proposed order recites that there was a period, a six week period that delayed at the request, at Northside's request, the siting board's initially scheduled June 30th, 2022 meeting. The secretary granted that meeting based upon Northside's request that it sought to pursue additional opportunities that were not identified in its letter. The proposed order before you relies on principles of administrative finality and the preservation of state agency resources as the basis for denying Northside's request to reopen the record. This relief is within the sole discretion of the siting board and the order before you notes the siting board's refusal to exercise that discretion based on the totality of the circumstances evident in this proceeding. Furthermore, the proposed order notes that Northside's general and belated proposal of additional minimization and avoidance measures lacks sufficient detail and any demonstration of feasibility in order to be seriously considered at this point. The proposed order also notes that Northside's proposal does not comply with DEC's guidelines for wetlands mitigation. Thus, the proposed order on rehearing entirely affirms the denial order's determination that Northside very failed to carry its burden and demonstrate that the project's adverse environmental impacts to wetlands and threatened and endangered species have been minimized or avoided to the maximum extent practicable, that the project as designed will comply with applicable environmental laws and that the project is in the public interest. As previously noted, these are mandatory, mandatory findings <coughs> that the siting board must make under public service law sections 1683 B, C, and E. A further note is that the order before you makes the requisite finding under Section 7.2 of the Community Leadership and Climate Protection Act, or CLCPA, that the Siting Board's denial of the certificate for this renewable energy project remains consistent with the emission reduction objections, objectives of the state. As the Siting Board is aware, the state is on course to achieve its renewable energy and greenhouse gas reduction objectives, but as the denial order notes and the proposed order before you repeats, Article 10 requires both environmental compatibility and public need in order to support the issuance of a certificate. In conclusion, we, rec we recommend the Siting Board's adoption of the proposed order before you and its affirmance of the August 9th, 2022 denial order. This concludes my presentation. We are, of course, available to respond to any questions that the Siting Board members may have. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Leary, for your comprehensive summary of the item before us. I believe the proposed draft order denying Northside's rehearing petition is appropriate in that Northside did not meet the standard for rehearing, and I will be supporting this item. Let me turn to my fellow board members for any comments or questions. Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Chair Mitchell. Um, I have considered the issues raised in Northside Energy Center's petition for rehearing, as well as, as the responses submitted by the staff of the Department of Environmental Conservation and the staff of the Department of Public Service. In my judgment, the proposed order before us today clearly and thoroughly examines the matters at issue the order's discussion of wetland and wetland related considerations, as well as threatened and endangered species and their habitat, 
provides a careful and thoughtful analysis. Uh, based upon my review, this proposed order reaches the correct decision as to the denial of the petition for rehearing. I would like to thank Administrative Law Judge Maureen Leary for her excellent presentation today. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Judge Leary and her fellow Administrative Law Judge Richard Sherman for their attentive management of this case, which ensured a full review of the issues raised. I have no further comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Dr. Lewis Michael? No questions or comments. Mr. Wells? No comments or questions. Mr. Williams? No comments or questions. I will now call for a vote. My own vote is in favor of the recommendation as described. Mr. Alexander, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Dr. Lewis Michael? In favor. Mr. Wells? In favor. Mr. Williams? In favor. The order is approved and the recommendation is adopted. Secretary Phillips, is there anything further to come before us today? There's nothing further. Thank you. We are adjourned.